So our final question is, can we make multiplication faster? And the answer is, of course we can. Well, let's see a couple ways to do this. So let's start with what we call booth recording. So booth paid attention to something like this, which I'm sure you've thought of as I showed you this sli these slides, that multiplying by zero is uh, kind of a redundant and a ridiculous type of a thing. Uh, if we know that we're multiplying by zero, we can just reduce the number of partial products. The problem is that we can't really do that because each, uh, each of the uh, multiplier bits can be zero or one. So we can't really do that, okay? Um, However, if we're using a, sh a serial sh a serial multiplier, then if we see a zero, we can just skip it and go to the next one. If we have many zeros, we can skip many of those and save a bunch of cycles. And look at this. Uh, Booth paid attention that, the, the, that we can turn sequences of ones into sequences of zeros pretty easily. Um, for example, let's take this uh, zero, one, 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 one. What we know is that it's actually not that far from uh, something that's heavily um, using zero, uh, zeros. So it's actually one, zero, 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 minus zero, 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 one. So we can see it over here, right? That uh, we have one, zero, 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 minus uh, zero, 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 one equals zero, one, 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 right? Which was our original thing, but these this used only two ones where this had three ones. In fact, uh, the, the sum of a binary number is, uh, for, uh, from uh, uh, zero to n minus one is gonna be two to the power of n minus one. So we can always do that. Just take the one, zero, zero, zero uh, type of thing that has only one uh, single one in the whole vector, remove one, one uh, from the uh, LSB, and then we get um, some, uh, then we get something that is heavily dominated by ones. So we can take something heavily dominated ones and make it like that. For example, just taking um, this type of a number like 56, which we see we have this area with uh, one, zero, one, 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 one in the middle, we can do that on this uh, part of it, just replace um, this part of it to a zero, one, zero, 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 and uh, minus the zero, 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 one, one, and zero, zero, and we can again um, change something that's heavily dominated by ones into something that's he heavily dominated by zeros. And again, with a serial type of multiplication, this can real, really help. Um, so we can actually introduce something that we would call a minus one bit and recode the multiplier. So for example, the number 56, okay? So the number 56 is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So we have this 1, 1, 1 in here, and we change it into 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Um, but then put a minus one, which represents the minus one that we had over here. And uh, if we take that, we can see that this is, you know, um, how did we get to this? We take two to the power of five plus two to the power of four plus two to the power of three. That equals 56. If we take this one, we get two to the power of six minus two to the power of three. Again, that's 56. So that's kind of just showing that, um, that these two things are equivalent to each other. So if we take something and we're not in a necessarily binary type of a situation, but we add some additional type of a um, of an operation, which is a minus one instead of a plus one, we can actually do this with recording and create a vector that has a lot of zeros in it. Okay, so um, Here's an algorithm that is called Radix 2 Booth Recoding that looks at um, every two bits and, turn, and, and does exactly what I said. So we're going to parse the multiplier from the left to the right. For each change from 0 to 1, we're going to encode a 1. And for each change from 1 to 0, we're going to encode a minus 1. If uh, we have no change, if it's 0 to 0 or 1 to 1, we're just going to put a 0. Um, for bit 0, okay, we're going to assume that there is a bit minus 1 that is a zero, and that will help us get our, our bit zero. So for example, we have this uh, number, which is 373 in hexa. Okay, so we start from the left, we take these two bits, and it's zero, zero. And again, there was no change, so we encode that to a zero. Here we have uh, zero to one. Zero to one, we said we encode a one, so we have a one over there. One to one, we have a uh, one, so we encode a zero over there. Okay, one to zero, that's a minus one. Zero to one, that's a one. 1 to 1, 1 to 1 is 0, and 0, and uh, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, okay? So um, if we look at that, uh, this is the answer. I hope I didn't make a mistake over there. Uh, let's see that we got it right. Uh, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, and 0, 1, 0. And uh, as I said, we have to imagine that there's a 0 over here, so 1 to 0 is going to be a minus 1. Okay, so this is our answer over here. Um, we got 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, uh, minus 1. Okay, and uh, let's see if that actually works. So that is basically taking all the 1s, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 
zero one zero zero and taking all the minus ones that's zero zero minus one zero 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 minus one zero 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 minus one so this minus this let's see if it still comes out three seven three so um let's find what the binary equivalent of this is and this is four eight four this is one 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 and when we do four eight four minus one 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 it comes out three seven three so that's just showing that this simple algorithm over here will actually um take any any uh binary vector and apply radix 2 boot recording on it and it will make it be heavily dominated by zeros okay however um, there is a problem with that first of all um, the, in the worst case if we have something like 01010101 and we do boot recoding it will have the same number of uh, ones after doing the boot recoding so it usually will work it usually reduce the number of uh, zeros but it doesn't always um, re uh, reduce I mean it will increase the number of zeros versus ones, but it doesn't always work. In the worst case, it doesn't. And therefore, we cannot actually go and um, uh, ensure that we take uh, less cycles or whatever to, to do our uh, implementation. Uh, the other thing is that, for, for example, for a combinatorial uh, block, it doesn't really help us. It helps us when we have this sequential type of shifting where we can skip over zero, but it doesn't really help us for uh, a combinatorial block until we do some more tricks, and that's what I'm gonna show you, and we call that modified booth recording, and we're gonna use Radix for booth uh, modified booth recording. So, um, uh, so let's see how we can uh, do this. So we're going to assume that we have a constant length recoder. We're going to take um, several bits and we're going to go and try to turn them into fewer bits than they are. So first we're going to apply standard booth recoding and then we're going to encode each pair of bits. So if we look at a, a sequence of bits, we look at a zero, zero, the weight of that in our recoded um, type of a, of, a, of a representation is zero. That adds nothing to our um, total, uh, to our to our total, okay? However, if we have a uh, something that begins with a one, so um, for example, zero, one, that adds one, okay? Plus one, minus one, this is actually in the, in the two to the power of one position, so that's two minus one equals also one, and plus one, zero, this again is into the two to the power of one positions, it's shifted left from this, so it actually equals two. So now if we're going to invent, for example, some sort of operation that is plus two, um, because we're now looking at uh, a radix four, that's three bits, then we can uh, represent uh, this thing uh, with a plus two instead of with, a, uh, with uh, just a minus one, zero, or a one. Okay, what about an end of one sequence? So if we have zero minus one, that's, uh, that's gonna take one off, the, um, off of the result. Minus one plus one, that's gonna take off two and that's gonna add one back, so it's also minus one. And just minus one zero, that's, uh, uh, gonna, take minus, uh, that's gonna take two or multiply it by two off of the result. Okay, so we can write that in a table. If we have three zeros, it's recoded to zero. If we have zero, zero, one, uh, we add one. Uh, if we have zero, one, one, we add two, and so there's this truth table that, that, that represents this, and let's uh, flow with me and see how we actually apply this thing and what we do with it, because right now it kind of looks um, confusing, and by the way, it is, but it really works well, and you'll see in a second. So now let's see how that works on our uh, previous example and um, forget the lookup table that we showed for a second and just let's look at our, uh, our, our uh, example of doing two stages of boot recoding. So the first stage we already saw before, we take our vector and we turn it into a boot recoded, um, you know, with zeros, ones, and minus ones. And we did that already. And now we can apply the second level of boot recoding on it. So we take each pair of, uh, a pair of bits over here that we have okay and we look at what their um, implication on the result is so for example zero minus one is going to give us minus one zero one is going to give us plus one zero minus one minus one one zero is plus two um, zero minus one is minus one and zero one is one um, does that uh, meet what I wrote over here one minus one two minus one um, one minus one okay so that is the uh, radix for booth recoded um, number that we, we made. Now, why is this good? And that's a good question, actually. Well, remember what we had before. We had a number of bits, you know, n bits over here, and then we had multiplied by n bits over here, and we took the multiplier, this guy, and we took each one of these bits and we made a partial product out of it. And we got a total of, you know, here we had six bits, so if uh, n equals six, we got n equals six partial products and then we had to sum up six vectors which takes a long time and that's the major point of our um, of our uh, propagation delay through the multiplier is the height of this partial product array what 
Booth recoding did is it actually made our uh, 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 gave us fewer partial products. We actually have half of the number of partial products over here. So look, we had here you know 12 bits in our uh, in our initial in, in our initial multiplier, and after booth recoding, we actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, exactly half of the number of these. So assuming we can do this minus one, two. Uh, 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 and minus two types of operations, then um, then we can really reduce the number of partial products to be n over two instead of n, and that's a really cool thing to do. Um, it took a long time and a, a strange situation to do this. We had to first do this uh, first level booth recoding, then the second level booth recoding, and the, the cool thing is is that we actually have this uh, table that, that enables us to do it. And uh, uh, if we look up in the table, we can do this initially in one shot. So we'll first put our zero over here, our virtual zero. We'll look at three bits because what booth recoding is doing is it's taking three bits and turning them into two, basically. So we have this one one zero. We go into the partial product and we get. A a minus one for this. Then we take our next three bits, looking again at the single bit, taking it over from the previous uh, uh, um, three bits. And so we have zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one is going to be plus one. Okay, then we take this over here. We have one, one, zero, one, one, zero is going to be minus one. Okay, then we take this zero, one, one, zero, one, one is going to be plus two. Okay, we take these three, one, one, zero, one one zero is going to be minus one, and then we take these three zero zero one zero zero one is going to be plus one, and let's see one minus one two minus one one minus one, and that is a, a one step shot just by using this lookup table. We took our in, in initial multiplier and turned it into a uh, booth recoded with n over two um, uh, bits, so it's it's easier. How do we actually use this in hardware? Well, that's also pretty cool. Um, let me erase this part over here so it doesn't bother us looking at the, uh, the thing over here. There's um, a, uh, uh, a truth table that shows exactly what we need to do, which turns out into a bunch of gates. And these gates take um, the X, uh, 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 you know, the three, it takes three bits, one previous, one uh, after in the, in the initial bit, put it in some logic that turn out this single double or negate. Um, put it into some other logic, and that, that puts out the partial product that we need to have in, in, in that particular um, area here. So instead of just a simple AND gate uh, uh, that we use to make our initial partial product, now we have this more complex type of a structure, which costs us in terms of hardware, but it can really do a, a, a great job in reducing the number of partial products, because this can all be done in parallel. Um, prior to uh, the, the, the larger calculation. So booth recoding uh, in this way, Radix 4 modified booth recoding, is a common way to reduce the complexity of a multiplier. However, um, we can actually do even better than that. And as I said before, in arithmetic, usually you can get to log two of the complexity. And this can be uh, applied even on top of booth recoding if we still have a large partial product array after our booth recoding. Again, all of these things, they are a trade-off between hardware and the speed we get in the end. So um, the way to get logarithmic uh, operations, as we saw for adders and for other things as well uh, that we probably run into in our engineering careers, is to do trees. So yes, uh, essentially, if we had our concept here and made a tree of it, we can probably get um, some sort of logarithmic reduction in the uh, in the complexity of the of the calculation. Okay, so so Wallace uh, brought up this idea, and the Wallace tree is a cool concept. It's gonna again take this linear type of uh, uh, of addition of many partial products and turn it into a tree, which will reduce uh, reduce it um, in a really nice fashion. And it's pr pretty much the fastest type of multiplier we can get. Okay, so let's look how this works, the mechanics of it. We have our um, dot diagram of uh, of our multiplier over here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our half adders, which can take two inputs and output two outputs. So remember, a half adder is going to take uh, you know a and b and put out sum and carry. Okay, and we have our full adder, which is going to take a b and a carry in. And it's going to put out a sum and a carry out. Um, and something that we have to really pay attention to is that the sum. Th this is basically a um, a, a, two, a two bit um, you know binary number. So the C out is has uh, has twice as much of the weight as the sum. 
In other words, if uh, we come out with one zero, it's equal to two, or one one is equal to one uh, to three, right? Whereas zero one is equal to one. So the carry out is basically the the twos bit, and the sum is basically the ones bit. Or if we look at such a structure over here, the carry is shifted by one over to the left. So when we look at this, we come and we take our uh, our half adder over here, and we take these two partial product bits, stick it into a half adder, and the output is going to be a sum over here, and a carry that's actually going to have a, uh, a higher value. Then we can take, for the next column, we can take a full adder, and what we're going to have come out is a sum, and over here we're going to stick the carry. Now we take the next one and we put another full adder. Again, we're going to get the sum over here, okay, and we're going to get the carry over here. Okay, uh, this guy we didn't do anything with, so we have to ca carry it down here, so we have our uh, initial dot over here. And again, here we can use a full adder and a half adder. So this is going to provide a sum and a carry, and this one's going to provide a sum and a carry. Okay, now we have two full adders. It's going to provide two sums over here, two carries over here. This is going to have two um, full adders, so it's going to be sum, sum, and the initial bit that we um, just pulled down, and uh, two carries over here, and et cetera, et cetera. And what we're going to arrive at, basically, is... The next stage, which is shown over here, is going to have, uh, so, okay, this sum went down over here. These two turned into one dot over here, right? Uh, here we saw that we're going to have a carry and a sum. That's this carry and that sum. Here we had a carry sum and the initial dot that we pulled down. So that's carry sum and the initial dot and so forth. So what we're going to have here is a new um, problem that we want to reduce. And again, we're going to go and we're going to cover it with full adders and half adders. Um, actually taking, so what a full adder is actually doing, it's taking three bits and outputting two. So it keeps reducing the size. A, a half adder doesn't exactly do that. It takes two and it uh, pu puts out two. So it doesn't reduce things. It just moves the carry over, okay? Um, but since this is actually taking three bits and reducing it to two, often we call a half adder a three to two compressor. Okay, and that's what we're doing actually here is we're taking this tree and we're compressing it. So the next stage after this, okay, we're going to have a more compressed tree. And we're going to keep on covering the tree with full adders and half adders at each stage until we arrive at two vectors. And now with these two vectors, okay, we already have these sums. That's a final value. But here we have two vectors, which are a, a bit smaller than n uh, bits or whatever, uh, or two n bits that we would have had initially. And all we have to do is have a sum here so we can stick it into a CLA or something to provide the sum. So what we're actually doing with the Wallace tree is we're taking this big parallelogram we have here and we're compressing it down to two final vectors, which we can then stick into a uh, into an adder. So um, we're compressing the Wallace. The Wallace tree is making this compression. So uh, again, this is a more simple example. We have our our partial product tree over here um, with a, a real simple uh, you know four by four type of a multiplier and what we're going to do in the first stage and again we somehow they figured this out we're just going to use two full adders which uh, uh, by the way why we see often a uh, triangle is because we can take these two guys and just draw them up here you know take this guy and draw it over here take this guy and draw it over here and we come out with a kind of a nicer picture instead of a parallelogram turns into a um, uh, into a triangle uh, we didn't change anything by just moving the uh, placement of these uh, these bits okay so we take those we cover them with half adders we get something that's uh, more um, balanced and then we get it into the uh, final place where we have just two vectors, the two vectors going to a final adder, and um, we can show this over here. So the partial products are going to go into these two half adders at the first stage. The outputs of the half adders are going to go into these three full adders and one half adder on the second stage, and the outputs of that are going to go into the final adder that we can implement with any one of the adder techniques that we learned before. So this is going to do a really nice type of a, um, a, of a reduction, and since we're using three to two um, uh, compressors, what we're going to get is a log uh, a three over two type of a reduction. It's not going to be a full log two reduction, but it's going to be something like a log three over two reduction if our uh, tree is large enough. So that's a really nice type of speed up, and it's the fastest type of multiplier that we can find out there, especially if you um, combine it with a Boothra coder.
Finally, I just want to say that you can add pipelining to most uh, multiplier structures. Again, this is going to cost us with hardware. So we can take our structure and at different places put a sampling stage in the middle. Um, the sampling stage makes each of the paths shorter. We're going to have to, of course, add registers which have overhead both in timing but particularly in area and power because we're going to have to have lots of registers in the middle. But in the end, we can have a much uh, faster uh, um, uh, frequency over here. So we can really pipeline a Wallace tree, just as you can see here. So that was our discussion for today about multipliers and adders and addition circuits uh, and arithmetic circuits. And you can actually look in, for example, in CMOS VLSI design, where uh, a lot of these things came from. You can see a lot more arithmetic circuits to find out more.